going to take up with for today's class. So in today's class, we'll first discuss about basic concepts of big data, features of BDM, key benefits of BDM, then BDM architecture, then the tasks that a developer should do, like um, BDM developer should do as part of his work. So big data basics, you remember, like we discussed uh, in the last class, like big data is all about any of the three V's, velocity, volume, or variety. If any of this is in, uh, you, you can say if volume is huge or the velocity is fast, or uh, you can say the variety is, uh, like the data is actually coming in various formats, then that data should actually be handled by big data applications. You will not be able to process it through RDBMS. RDBMS has certain limit as we discussed that day. So after that limit, uh, RDBMS will not be able to store that data. And moreover, uh, if you'll try to retrieve it, it is going to take a lot of time to get back your data if the data is huge, right? You'll have to start applying indexes. You'll have to start applying uh, st uh, statistics so that uh, the aggregated data will come you know faster so these kind of things we do okay. now uh, if we'll uh, see in the big data architecture it's just we are storing our data in the form of the files and the files are uh, stored across the distributed uh, uh, distributed cluster that actually uh, has the uh, multiple nodes, like the cluster itself has multiple nodes. Uh, nodes can't be just, uh, you know, physical computer. It can be a virtual computer that are created inside a single computer that can also be possible. So in that cluster, in the different nodes, you have your data placed. Now, if you want to bring up your data, then whatever the data you are looking for, you are just giving, uh, you know the pointer to it or you are just looking at the name node name node in uh, big data or hadoop is so there are two two type of uh, nodes that uh, we talk about most of the times name node and data node right the name node is the one where we have uh, uh, where we have the details of where our data is stored and data node is where exactly our data is stored so name node is nothing but a glossary or an index for it, your data and data node is actually the actual place where the data is stored. Now, in each of the blocks that we have for uh, Hadoop, uh, or you can say the files uh, that we are actually storing in the HDFS, so that actually holds up uh, somewhere around 64 MB of your data, right? So, E64 MB of data gets stored in those blocks, okay? So, uh, so let's say if you have a data that actually you want to push in into uh, the HDFS. So what happens when you actually push your data into HDFS? Then um, in HDFS also in your so how what do you think HDFS is? HDFS is built of uh, you, you can say uh, the commodity hard disk only like for example the one you have in um, you, you have in the home that also you can use for uh, the use for further taking it as uh, you know uh, taking it as your Hadoop cluster right you can actually build the cluster on top of the disk also right okay. the commodity disk also so that commodity disk also you can actually use think of it like you don't need specialized uh, this that actually you can put into uh, the rack and then you can use it. You can use that disk also. Okay. So after having that disk, let's say you are actually using multiple other disks like that, and then uh, you are trying to store up your file or the data that you are processing or getting from somewhere. So when you are actually doing that, uh, when you are actually doing that, there is a um, you know to store it up like how much data can be stored at one place in one block because there is a block that that is available uh, in hdfs 
Okay. So this block is uh, this block is just 64 MB. What? Once that 64 MB is actually full, then the uh, other data will actually go into the next 64 MB block. Okay. We'll discuss it in more detail um, in upcoming classes. Let me see. go on. So as we discussed uh, in the last class, uh, like you have the data either from, let's say, stock exchange, relational uh, database systems, sensor data, social media, all of this data make up into big data. OK, it involves the tools and techniques or framework like Hadoop that helps you up um you know to, that helps you up in actually bringing that data or storing that data and that too in an easier way if uh, if we'll go back let's say 10 year uh, 10 years we'll be able to see like uh, even the oracle or the other databases that were available at that time even the oracle is available right now as well but the, the architecture has improved a lot right if you'll rem uh, if you might have worked uh, you know 10 years ago on the oracle uh, let me tell you if you're uh, actually uh, working on the data set which was huge and you are trying to query it up it was taking up 15 20 minutes to bring up your data if you have worked on mainframe then you might know like in the mainframe when you are actually trying uh, to find out some data then it takes even uh, you can say one or two hour to bring that data up at that time they also have got uh, you can say uh, design in a better way nowadays but yes okay okay so big data world we already discussed that day right too many decisions to begin with you have all these uh, you know all these questions in your mind whatever these colored bubbles we have like we'll have to first understand where uh, our data is coming from then what kind of storage layer we should use because think of it like uh, you are uh, you are either using on premise or cloud so if it is on premise then obviously you will go for hdfs and if it is uh, like uh, on cloud uh, it can be either aws or azure so if it is aws then you'll go for s3 if it is azure then you'll go for azure blob because these uh, these different tools are proprietary to one or other systems so this is one of the reason the people should use the one they want to use right and apart from that it depends upon the pros and cons of each one of these applications that will help you out in selecting uh, the one which is best for your use case right yeah Similarly, like you'll have to actually decide if you are going to use Hortonworks, Cloudera, or Mapper. So, how you'll decide that, like the distribution, which distribution you should go ahead with. So, the uh, the reason or uh, the pointer to actually get started with that should be uh, should be again the pros and cons of your uh, or you can say the data that you are getting from uh data that you are getting from your source like if it is a legacy data then obviously you should go with some uh some of your uh distribution uh that should actually be able to handle it up in a better way if it is erp then uh, then there is a lot of relative data that we have uh, stored in erp so those relative data how we can actually better use uh in which particular distribution so that is what we'll have to see so on the basis of the pros and cons of each, on the basis of the requ requirement, on the basis of which uh, tool or which framework you are already using, how it will be integrated to that and the framework on all these uh, criteria, you'll have to first assess your um, application and then you'll have to decide that this one you'll use or not use, right? Now, if we'll look at the data formats, data formats, you have a lot of data formats in Hive or uh, you can say in Hadoop. So in Hadoop, if you are using, let's say, one or other data formats, then um, obviously you'll use it on the basis of uh, the further systems that you are using or uh, the way or the speed that, that actually it provides. Or you can say like it is helping you out to bring up, uh, you know, 
more into your uh, uh, more into your uh, systems so if that's the case then you'll go ahead with one or other other file format otherwise who want to go ahead uh, of you can say text file format because text is visible to our eyes right whenever you'll open a text file you'll be able to see what is stored in that but if we'll open some data which is stored in the parquet format you'll not be able to see what exactly is in there right so it will just be a binary file and you'll be able to see uh, some different kind of characters that will come up in your data okay now uh, if you'll see these data formats uh, these data formats actually have the compression mechanism so this compression mechanism uh, is nothing but helping you out to store your data in a uh, in a way so that it should not take much space right we are talking about the big data so we'll have to think about the compression as well the reason for that is it will not actually think about the compression mechanism obviously will uh, will have a lot of the data lying here and there let me tell you like in the big data or in the today's world the compression is not uh, you can say is not something that is stopping you up for your work even the etl applications other type of applications the ui or uh, you can say other uh, user experience uh, applications that we have that can even take the compressed data and can actually pull out your data and show it on your web spaces or etl or reporting directly so you need not to uncompress it further for uh, you know showing it up or for doing all other exercises yes i can tell you yes the performance will be different like when you are showing it just compressed or uncompressed or because obviously in the background in the temporary uh, uh the temporary area or the workspace it does uh uncompress it first to show you right okay, okay but but still if if you want to see directly let's say if you have uh, if you have zip, zipped up your file uh, so if that file is zipped and if you want to see the data let me tell you in unix you can do zcat uh, and then the file name the zip file name and you'll be able to see the data inside it and that data will actually uh, be exactly the same the way it was looking uh, like in normal file now instead of that zcat if you should have used cat only right uh, are you aware of unix commands uh, or shall i explain yes. it me yeah i am aware of unix command okay. i know so you might, you might have done cat on the normal file right uh, and then yes. you might have seen like uh, yes the data is there in that right but uh, if you'll have to see uh, the zip file data you should have used gcat right yeah. or else we need to unzip first and then see. yes or else you'll have to unzip first and then see but uh, okay. if for example you want to only see it then you can do zcat directly right uh, why do you actually unzip it if uh, if you just want to see it and you don't need not to process it i'll i'll suggest you should first unzip it and then process it but the tools application or the commands allow you to actually take up your compressed data directly right okay, okay now now come ahead of it like uh, the files which are uh, which we are talking about here in the data formats these files um, like most of these files are binary files now you may ask like what is the binary file so binary file is uh, just like uh, you know the file that you can't read up uh, through your i right okay. so you'll have to actually just convert them uh, either into the uh, into the file format that you can understand or uh, the other way is to actually uh, uh, other ways to actually just create a table on top of it and then see or another way is to actually use the tools or applications that can read it make sense yes so that's how you'll have to deal with a different kind of the data formats and on different type of the data format you have different compression mechanism because the file format is different obviously the compression mechanism should be aligned to that particular file system 
let's say if you are talking about text then gzip is the one that you'll do on top of it if you are talking about parquet the snappy is the compression mechanism for that if you are talking about orc then you have the lzo that you'll actually do in on top of it bzip2 will work on impala so th this is this is actually the different type of the file formats then we have the different type of the compression mechanism on top of it right okay but think of it like when you are starting up with your uh, big data project isn't it difficult to take a lot of the decisions because on this particular slide you can only see 20 to 25 uh, items uh, but when you will actually go into the real world and you'll start preparing your application you'll have to just assess 100 or in some cases even thousand of big data applications to start with your architecture or even uh, to start further with your project so isn't it difficult or isn't it we are not talking about streaming here right if you should talk about streaming data then you'll talk about aws kinesis you might talk about the um, apache kafka you might talk about uh, um, uh, further like uh, aws uh, hose pipe or uh, there are multiple other rabbit mq like the different message queuing systems you'll talk about then further you'll uh, start talking about uh, you can say uh, the different map reduce or the spark execution programs just like you'll talk about lambda or emr or if you'll uh, start even uh, you know do some search engine uh, uh, a search engine or extraction kind of thing then you'll ask for apache lucene uh, or you'll if you are actually talking about the log streaming you'll start talking about plume so see after 25 or so i'm trying to give you even five to ten na other names that you can actually work on but and even the different questions that you can have you can have the streaming question you can have the log streaming you can have the question related to message queuing you will you can have the questions related to uh, different kind of the databases that actually can uh, be used uh, for creating the tables on top of this HDFS. So think of it. There is a large space out there and there are a lot many open source or the proprietary application available across the globe for the usage in the big data. And when you start with your uh, project, you'll have to take very difficult decisions if you are going ahead with open uh, source, um, you know, open source applications. Uh, a decision would be taken by uh, like a BI team or like, is there any team who takes this so decision? There is normally, the normally, normally in the organization, there is a COE team, center of excellence team. What they do is they have the group of the architects that actually, uh, so it is either a team or a virtual team like from different teams architect actually uh, just be a part of it and they guys discuss like uh, which all uh, you know the tools we should use or if you you can say like your uh, company is captive company just like uh, yours obviously they have the coe teams and in other even the consulting firm yes uh, there are coe experts center of excellence experts who actually work on uh, different kind of the tool and then identify like the one which is best for their particular application okay. but they actually go for a requirement hearing first once the requirement is heard then they decide like what exactly they should go for okay so normally coe answer to your question is coe team center of excellence team otherwise in some of the cases like the normal teams itself uh, take the decision yes this is something that can be done on this we'll use it right okay but these decisions are very difficult and in the last class also i told you like 85 percent of the projects were failure because these decisions were not taken right in the last one decade that we had okay. now the questions that you are asking there or the questions that we had there can be answered through Informatica BDM very easily. Now you may ask how? 
So you need not to do anything. Just create one of the Informatica BDM mapping and then decide all of the things on your properties for Informatica BDM mapping. So Informatica BDM addition uh, that requires, um, you know, uh, that requires you to prepare up the mapping and then um, then uh, you know deploy uh, or whatever whatever you want to do with that mapping that you can do as you go like decide as you go like decide all these uh, uh, all these um, answers uh, on on the go like when you are actually specifying the features or the properties then only you can specify it uh, let's take an example of the execution engine uh, so to specify execution engine, you'll just uh, you'll just select it, and it will just be taken up uh, for your execution, right? Just a second, I'm showing you up the way uh, the easy easier way. Yeah, see here. You can directly uh, select the option that you think yes this is the option that i'll go for like the spark i want execute it on and this is the connection that i'll go uh, and uh, use so uh, go on with and we'll use it and uh, that way you will be able to execute all your mappings on spark and the connection that you are using is obviously the hadoop connection uh, that will allow you to run it on Spark. So it is just a cluster connection that will actually get created. And uh, using this, um, yeah. You said like uh, it's a smart executor. It will decide to run on which executor it wants to. By here... by default, it's not. By default, it is not. But yes, if you if you want to make it a smart executor, then what you should do is you'll have to select all these options. Let's say in Hadoop. Mm -hmm. Uh, you should use Hive, Blaze, and uh, Spark. And then once you have selected all the three and execute up your mapping, then yes, it will act as smart uh, smart executor. Like it will decide uh, like which one it should actually take on the go. Okay. Okay. But if you are just selecting the one, obviously it is not going to, uh, you know, take uh, all of them and decide because you are implicit uh, implicitly uh, saying that i'll go with spa mm -hmm. yes more details um, um, are coming on the way we'll we'll discuss like how how that's decided which particular uh, engine it will actually be running it on okay so similarly Big data management, it is a solution to leverage high speed processing capabilities of Hadoop ecosystem. It enables organization to process large and fast changing data. Large means volume, fast changing means velocity. So large data greater than 10 TB because prior to that also Teradata works for you. Fast changing, the data is coming at very fast pace every second you are getting thousands of records 10,000 20,000 even thousand even 500 your rdbms can't uphold just 500 records in most of the cases but yes in the teradata if you have worked on it it allows even 10,000 uh, records in a second you might have seen like uh, when it is loading the data even in teradata it can load 10,000 of records at a time Okay, talking about the feature list that we have for Informatica BDM. So similarly uh, to your Informatica Power Center, you have the visual design environment. Moreover, you have universal data access. Uni by universal data access, what we mean, like we can access all the different type of connections or the databases through our tool, through Informatica Developer. And that way, obviously, we are able to get connected to most of the databases very quickly. So think of it, what is happening there? Like you have the pre-built connectors available, right? Because uh, whenever, uh, for example, if you are writing up a small Spark program or Python program, 
then if you will have to create the connections then first what you, what you should do import the libraries of those connections then use the methods to actually um, uh, you know execute right if you remember from your past you might have seen uh, that people who are actually making up the connection through the code uh, with database they they do like uh, you know first they create cursor and then they uh, run the query on top of press cur cursor and then the, that cursor will fetch the row one by one right that is how it works so if somebody is actually giving you the ability just like in the power center they have given the ability to connect the database and get or retrieve the data without actually calling up any code or the procedure or the program or the method then it is actually making up your life easier right but think of it like uh, in the power center there were limited number of the sources that you can go on with yes there were power exchange connectors but you'll have to pay a lot for them so most of uh, most of the connectors which you need you actually go on for those only in power center right but in informatica bdm you have a lot many connectors if you want to connect to facebook yes you can connect if you want to connect to twitter if you want to connect to linkedin if you want to actually bring up the data from aws kinesis if you want to bring up the data from aws s3 if you want to bring up the data from azure blob if you want to get the data from hdfs if you want to get the data from hive hbase or any of the different type of uh, you can say data sets you can actually get the data from there so it's just about the requirement that you should have and then you have a lot of pre-built connectors somewhere around 80 90 pre-built connectors are available in informatica bdm for you use data integration on hadoop and spark earlier obviously it was far more difficult to bring up all your data from different type of the sources into the big data applications like Hadoop or Spark. Now through Informatica BDM, it is not requiring you to actually first uh, just take up the data and then do the conversion or do other kind of activities to make sure that you can use it further for your execution purposes. You can just use. Yeah. Uh, actually, like Hadoop and Spark is nothing but a data cloud database, right? no uh, here hadoop and spark that we are talking about is just execution engine spark is not the database it is a core engine and in hadoop also the map reduce is the engine map reduce or say these are the engines by engine what i mean is the execution framework let's say uh, let okay. me give you an example the car uh, the car that you use for uh, you know uh, um, commuting so that is actually a medium or the engine that actually helps you out right it is not uh, the storage or uh, something that uh, stores the data up right car is just allowing you or the uh, process to actually read somewhere right and then think about uh, think about the uh, let's say think about um, uh, think about in the kitchen we have uh, a stove or the gas so that that is helping us to uh, helping us to prepare the food so what we do is we give them a raw material and that gets cooked right so that that is again an engine engine is a mechanism through which if you'll pass or uh, a mechanism or a process that if you'll pass something then you'll get the result out of it right the desired result that you want right makes sense and, uh, what about database databases are just the place where you are storing your data right if you want to retrieve if you want to do a different operations on top of it uh, then you can use it further obviously it runs the process on top of it and there are the engines in there also but if we'll talk about the hadoop or the big data engines these are the engines uh, that is okay. actually running the programs behind this uh, behind the scene and are much more stronger than that of the database Database is just doing one kind of activity, just like an Almira. Like you can actually put a lot of uh, things in there and then getting it back. Simple. Are you doing any anything else? For example, if uh, I want to put, uh, let's say, my laptop into my Almira, then um, I, I'm doing that. And if I want to bring it back, yes, I'll bring it back. And someday I thought, yes, let me actually take up, you know, uh, take up uh, only the uh, only the keyboard and mouse, not uh, whole laptop. Let's 
uh, be there so up to me like how i want my data to come out from the database isn't it mm. it's just a storage file system is just a storage you are putting the files retrieving them the main functions are storing and retrieving everywhere in all the databases all the file systems okay okay we have intelligent data parsing on hadoop by data parsing i mean like you have already seen we have different kind of the file formats so to convert one to other that's what we do right uh, like for example to park uh, like uh, from uh, text file to parquet parquet to text file that's what we do so we have high speed mass ingestion and uh, extraction uh by that what we mean is as i told you like ingestion is all about import extraction is all about export so mass means multiple high speed multiple uh, table import multiple table export that's what they would say like in informatica pdm you can do it okay now about the data profiling uh obviously doing the data profiling on top of big data should be a challenge if we'll do it without any big data application but through informatica bdm you can do quickly your profiling on the big data sources the profiling we mean nothing but looking at the data from different perspectives right you know what profiling is yeah like uh, data uh, like cleansing of a data no uh, profiling is so uh, let me give you a real time example Pro, uh, have you ever been uh, for the uh, you can say uh, for for blood profiling yeah checking up like what your which uh, blood group you belong to or uh, uh, like what uh, so to, to check like to check your health they do profiling right yes when you go for a car um, a car service they do a profiling on top of your car you might have seen that they give you a car profiling report yes this is the profile of your car do you want actually to get uh, these these thing uh, these is uh, you know uh, activities done on your car they ask you right even after your body profiling they ask you like uh, this is uh, this is actually uh, you know uh, this is actually uh, uh, only problem that uh, let's say cholesterol is more or whatever whatever i'm just giving an example don't take talk, take it otherwise it's just like they uh, they just tell you like what exactly uh, you know uh, the profile of some of the thing is like the car the uh, the normal uh, let's say for example they come to your house and uh, interior designer they profile it up so profiling by the by now you got to know yes profiling is all about looking at uh, you know getting the data out of it preparing it in a way that you want to see aggregated so that you can quickly understand what the data is all about so let me give you an example in profiling you'll have the data just like uh, you know uh, this particular column is number this particular column is uh, uh, bad care this particular column is date and this particular column will hold this particular uh, th this much length this particular columns uh, min max median uh, first last value so all the values will uh, will be there then uh, you'll have the variance uh, you'll have the different statistical values so um, profiling is actually giving all together all most of uh, most of the details around your data if you are profiling the table obviously table has the columns columns are something that will get profiled right and will show you what exactly your data is hope you understand it now like the profiling yeah before you were right like before cleaning you should do the profiling so by saying before cleaning i'll do the profiling that means i'll understand what invalid data i have what bad data i have then i'll prof clean it so profiling is the step that can be done prior to cleaning right smart performance optimizer or smart executor is the same thing that we were discussing about like selecting the engine that we want it to run on so if you select it multiple engines together so informatica bdm itself is smart and will be able to take up the decision like the engine that is best for the use case and will run your mapping on top of it 
hope this makes sense. Uh, Kamal, actually, like this here we mentioned three, like hive, blaze, and spar. But what is map reduced? And that is also an engine, right? So let me tell you. Uh, even for you, it is just a blank space. Like when you are actually even selecting Spark, you don't know what is happening in the background. For you, this is just a sort of mapping, right? When you uh, when you run it on top of Blaze, then also you don't know what is happening uh, in the background, and it runs the mapping. Only thing if you want to see is you can go and see that code the way I have shown you up in the last class. Now coming back to your question, you are saying that there was map reduce and page. Where are they? So they are into hype. Hype comes either with map reduce or page. So you can set it up uh, with map reduce or page. Uh, so the answer to your question is in the further slides. Let me show you. Here it is. Hype can be on map reduce, can be on page. Okay. So hive itself is actually holding up any one of these, depending upon uh, the architecture that you will follow up. Okay. Okay. So uh, we have flexible serverless deployment. If you remember from the last class, I have shown you of the application. So that application is helping you out to do the deployment and it is acting as a deployment object for you. So now your question might be and so how does it become flexible serverless deployment? So the reason why I'm saying that application is something that is actually helping you out to uh, to get your uh, you know get your mappings executed and then uh, let your uh, uh, let your you know uh, let your code promote it from one environment to another so you need not use some other server or just a deployment server from where you'll keep on deploying all the things you can actually do it through the informatica bdm servers itself and moreover in the application itself you can actually uh, promote your code you need not you need not uh, go for some um, uh, some other uh, space wherein you will just put your code and then further deploy it are you getting my point like it is just like uh, you need not to have a different server for it normally if you might have worked in uh, some of the database or ui projects they need a separate uh, deployment server from where they actually execute up their scripts and those scripts will get connected to different systems or if you have used jenkins then uh, jenkins uh, need a different server itself for its execution so that's not the case here here it can be done through your application and moreover the application can do it very seamlessly through the application itself while deploying uh, the code on dev you can actually deploy it on test if the dev and test lie on the same domain okay. any question if you have till here please ask no oh, i'm fine okay so uh, the key benefits are like you can integrate more and more data from more sources you can ingest any data through the library of pre-built connectors you can process and deliver data anywhere you so informatica supports multiple on-premise and off-premise hadoop distribution optimized runtime processing we have and simplified monitoring across multiple engines so you need not to monitor a lot of uh, you know by uh, by the big data if you'll see like you have a lot of tools so if by books you'll go you'll have to look at the logs at different places right when you started some application it has used let's say eight to ten uh, different type of applications behind the scene so if it has uh, chosen uh, up or uh, are running uh, the processes on top of those eight to ten applications obviously you'll have to go and check the logs at every place so that's not the case here yarn itself shows you up all the logs so simplified monitoring we have across all the engines so if for example your mapping is running on hive or uh, spark then you can see all your logs for hadoop or big data on yarn yarn is yet another resource negotiator okay. the one which is helping you out uh, with the resource management okay just like a resource management group in your organization it is actually 
uh, aligning the resources to different tasks that actually comes up through your Hadoop. So now uh, uh, about Blaze, uh, do you have a different Blaze job monitor for execution of your jobs? Let me show you how this Yarn or Blaze look like. I remember uh, you have seen that in the last class, but let me give you a, a re. I've uh, seen Yarn. Sure yeah. Please. yeah let me let me show you at least uh, mm, so if you are talking about something at least we should actually see that there should be no if and buts about these uh, so uh, normally monitoring tools we use first of the first monitoring tool in all our exercises we use uh, administrator tool and yarn web user interface is this one this is the blaze job monitor now you should see how they look like when they are uh, fully um, you know available so this is how you can actually see in your informatica bdm administrator the link to your monitoring tool so through this link you can actually get to your uh, let's say uh, tool like in the, this case it is a blaze so if you'll click on this, you'll be going on to the Blaze job monitor. So first let's look at the Spark monitoring. So Blaze, uh, Blaze job monitoring, you can see it here. So it is, uh, it is uh, like your Blaze job monitor. This is how your uh, jobs execution will look like on the Blaze job monitor. Okay. Okay. So very easy to actually come to this. So um, so first point first point for you is to go on the administrator. Just like normally we were checking the logs in Informatica Power Center, we'll see the logs same way. But mm -hmm. if there is a failure, if there is a failure and the failure is not uh, at the level of Informatica B BDM, so then uh, you will have this uh, monitoring URL. Think of it like if the failure is at the level of Informatica BDM that can be seen up there in uh, BDM itself. It shouldn't have reached to the cluster or it shouldn't have reached to Blaze or Spark in any case. But yes, if that's not uh, limited to the level of Informatica BDM, then you'll have to go into the tool and then uh, um, go into the, uh, you can say, go into the uh, monitoring tool and then see it like the monitoring tool for uh, you can say high wind spark uh, is yarn and for blaze it is a blaze job monitor that's how you'll reach to the monitoring okay uh, so if you have any questions you can ask i'm good okay so can can we wrap up here because i have another class uh, at eight so uh, i'm almost near to it yeah, let's fine. meet tomorrow at sharp uh, seven. Okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.